Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN, it is episode 52, season four of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor and good pals at Canadian Club Whiskey. Um, how was your golf game, Ray Ferraro? How was it? You know, you, I mean, you raced back, you know, you got there in plenty of time and uh, enjoyed some, was the weather really good or just okay? I wore shorts. Ah, oh, stop. Actually, this hoodie, light hoodie, it was beautiful day. It's going to rain today, you know, uh-huh. uh, but that, so it was just beautiful. So I had to drop Reese off at school. I told him, I go, Reese, I don't think I'm going to have time to even slow down today. You might have to jump out on the move here. Huh. So <laughs> stopped him off, dropped him off, got to the course, walked right up to the first tee, missed one fairway. Come okay. on. I drove it spectacular. I had some rough spots. One of your strengths, so you normally hit it pretty I drive straight, it. right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, my, that's what I do best. Had some rough spots around the green. Um, shot 79, so I was pumped i had a good for you it was great and it was great to see see the group again you know saw eight eight guys we have a group of about a dozen or 16 that they book a couple of tea times you just show up and they you go out with whoever and it's Mm. it it was it was great it was beautiful day so is there card matching and shenanigans going on out there there's there's one guy um mike is the he's kind of the centerpiece of this thing yeah so he's got a spreadsheet Okay. And so all um, you play teams, and so your group plays everybody else's group, and so at the end you start matching the cards and stuff. And any money that change hands hands, he's he puts in a spreadsheet. Uh-huh. And so the the thing is, you never collect it. At the end of the year, everybody's agreed that the money goes oh, it goes into do- a pool, and we donate it to charity. Um, and so nice. it was uh, that was last year was my first year with a group, and I was like. You know, so I, I thought I was actually winning money, and they're like, "No, no, you know, you know, we donate this." And I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> I no didn't idea. sign up for that. <laughs> I had no idea." It, it's really they're a great group of guys. Really, ah, really good fun. for you. That honestly is what I miss most about being a full time member is that camaraderie and you know playing yeah. with different players and things like that. You know, not that the guys I play with aren't fun to play with, but you play with the same three guys, you know, seventeen times a season. You know, it's yeah. time to shake it up a little bit. How about I played one year. Uh, again, Dan Murphy and I play quite often from Sportsnet. And I'm going to get the total wrong, but I think Murph and I played over 20 rounds in the same year. Yeah. And so we play the same game all the time, 5-5-10. Five, five, and, you know, you can press a little bit here and yeah, there. Yeah. I think at the end of the year, I owed him $7. No kidding. Murph's a player was, too, though, right? Like he, uh, can, Murph he can, can he can pound it out there. Murph is the grumpiest best player I've ever played with. <laughs> How'd you play today, Murph? Oh, I hit it like crap. And uh yeah, would you shoot? 76. Yeah. You're yeah. like, well, how crappy could you have hit it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. And he's a great chipper and putter. Like hundred yards in, he just mows people down. He's and he's fun to play with. Oh. Really, but seven dollars. I mean, we could have. <laughs> you can't even buy for, each other a glass of wine for that. Come I mean, on. Here we are. We're, we're on the course for almost a hundred hours, and we transpired seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When's your next uh, game? This weekend. I'm off. As um, soon as I, as soon as we finish here, I'm off uh, to Pittsburgh. Back to back weekends in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh and Vancouver are close together. I don't know if you know that, Drake. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Real how about close. that? How we'll get into planes, this in headlines trains. pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, but we'll get into this quick in, in headlines. But, yeah. You know, so I'm in Pitt, and they've got Boston coming in there. Mm-hmm. These are tough points now, man. These Grinding are points, yeah. right? I don't know. You're right. Let's let's get into headlines here, and we'll get to that battle in the East, Florida, Pittsburgh. Um, I just, man, I don't. Again, always feels like we have to put the disclaimer out there. We don't cheer for teams. We 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 cheer for stories and individuals. I have a hard time looking at the Stanley Cup playoffs without Sidney Crosby involved. So anyway, we'll talk about that. I want to go to the West um, because, man, what a game last night uh, between the Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings. And, you know, there's just some angst around Edmonton, probably L.A. as well. It's just that the media in L.A. isn't quite as loud on social media as it is, understandably, in Edmonton, the Canadian market. Um, that looked to me like a pretty well-oiled, no pun intended, machine. 
execution from the goalie, Stu Skinner, making 43 saves and securing that shutout. Um, Short-handed goal by Connor McDavid and all the other pieces that found a way to button that game down. Yeah, well, a couple of things from the game. First off, I don't think those two teams are going to play each other in the first round. Okay, yeah. Uh, Secondly, um, three games ago, Edmonton goes into Arizona. They win 5-4. They go into Vegas. It is wild. And they win 7-4. And then they win 2 nothing. So the seven goals are always kind of just around the corner. Right. You know, like yeah. um, the Oilers power plays working at a historic level. Mm-hmm. Are they going to get power plays in the playoffs? Power plays always go down. They always do. Um, although the last couple of years, not as far down as they have in the past, which I think is, is a good thing. Yeah. Um, LA did not have Kevin Fiala last night in the game. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he he was out last night in a zero, zero, one, nothing game. Does Kevin Fiala change it a little bit? He's capable for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe he might get one of those 43 shots right. and maybe he finishes it that somebody else doesn't. The McDavid shorthanded goal. I, I I hope people can appreciate when he intercepted the puck, the agility to get through those two players. You know, all those videos we see of him training with those little, with the um, implements on the ice. Yeah. That, yeah. that pep hockey system. That's it. Like you have to imagine those players being little, um, like traffic cones, almost those little, those little um, pylons, call them implements again. Yeah. You know that are on the ice, yeah. and you've got to go. It's side to side speed. McDavid goes zip zip through there, mm. and if you're Corpusalo, this is great. The guy is going that fast, and he's got a hundred foot head start. <laughs> There's like, I don't know. Maybe it hits you. Maybe it doesn't. But it. Stu Skinner was terrific last night. It's in front of Skinner that is going to be the key for the Oilers. It's going to be that blue line and how they defend. Skinner doesn't have to throw shutouts on the board. That's the, all he's almost in the position of um, Darcy Kemper last year. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't screw it up. Right. Just, just be, be capable. And I, I, I'm telling you, Drakes, I think Stu Skinner is an excellent goalie. Uh, I really do. He's a little inexperienced, but I think he is excellent. What about the Oilers uh, in terms of catching Vegas in the Pacific? Does it matter? I think Vegas, is it finish, I think Vegas finishes third. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I I think it's, um, I mean, they've got dial a goalie in net. Like who, whoever's upright is the guy going in net. Yeah. Um, whether it's quick or Brassois right now, I don't think Logan Thompson's a, an option for at least the immediate future. Uh, Aiden Hill's not skating. They got Yuri Patero who's played two NHL games. I mean, like they're just trying to hold it together back mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. They do miss Riley Smith. He's really good. Um, a really quiet, complete player. But I think he's back pretty quick. But I, that's why I think um, uh, LA and Edmonton aren't going to play to get, play each other in the first round. Okay. I think it's going to be Vegas and whoever doesn't win the division. Okay. Well, let's go to the bottom of the conference uh, and the battle that's happening in the West there. And, and the Winnipeg Jets – are doing everything internally to find a way to not make the playoffs. I mean, Calgary should have been dead and buried long ago, you know, based on on what Winnipeg has in that lineup. Yet it seems like every top player wearing that Jets uniform has gone cold. I don't know that we've seen anything like this of late. And you can tell the coach has had enough. Um, yeah. Experimentation is ongoing with Shifley on the wing now and things like that. So... I don't know. Do, you, do they want, hang on? I mean, do they find a way to get it done? It's really hard to to all of a sudden find it again. Yeah. Uh, it's always easier to lose it than to find it. And, I mean, I, I think I mean, Kyle Connors at like one goal in 15 or 16 games, something like that. Yeah, he's a terrific player. And, you know, and Shifley's in a ditch and they, you know, Dubois has been in and out of the lineup. And now all these stories about, you know, what his future looks like and, and that seeps into the room. And then are, are you really, 
um, are you really able to commit when you know what the outcome's likely going to be? And and I'm not saying that, I mean, that's human nature. That's more than any, you, your focus doesn't become singular anymore. And then that seeps in to what other guys are doing. You know, I, honestly, outside of Josh Morrissey, which skater has had a, had yeah. a great year there? Yeah. But what do you think of the eye roll? From Rick Bonus, um, I Bones is an honest man. He's very direct. Kind of wears the heart on the sleeve. He's earned that based on years of service in varying capacities, including NHL head coach. Um, just asked about. I'm going to paraphrase the disconnect with Mark Scheifele. That was really specifically what it was about. Scheifele likes to play one way. Bonus needs him to play a certain way, right? And he was asked about it post game, and that. It was pretty obvious. I mean, he was very demonstrative in his disappointment <laughs> in in hearing that from one of his star players. Do we read anything more into that, or that's just heat of the moment stuff? Um, well, it's, it's certainly a frustration, a heat of the moment, right? Like, uh, I mean, that's that goes without without saying. Um, would it have been better, maybe, not to say anything? Sure, but yeah. you know, but here, but here's the thing: like, at some point, you're you're the best player on the team, mm -hmm. or or certainly the you know one of the focal points of of that team. It you cannot be an independent contractor in a team sport. Yeah, you can't be, and quite frankly. Connor McDavid could be an independent contractor. Yeah. Mark Shifley's not good enough to be an independent contractor. Like that. Th there's like three players that Nate McKinnon can be an independent contractor. Kale McCarr could be an independent contractor. Mm -hmm. I don't think David Posternock can be. Mm. And he's not. Right. Like, like he's just, he's just not and like that. I think Pasternak's a really good example for Mark Shifley because David Pasternak just scored his 53rd goal of the season, a total that Shifley's not approached. Right. And he plays, look, he plays different than a lot of guys in Boston, but he, he plays in their framework. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking at this, you you have to decide. Each player's got to decide what's most important to them, and and that and the coach can yell and rant and rave and stomp his feet. And what are you going to do? Bench him? Mm. Does that make your team any better? Of course not. Yeah. Mark's got to take half a step back. Just just not a full step. Just a half a step back and go. Okay, what do I need to do here to help our team snap this? Because mm. it's not been two weeks, Drake. Right. I mean, for the team, this has been. A while. This has been a while. And and again, to be honest, he's one of the players that can turn the ship. Mm -hmm. Like he's good enough for that. Like he's he's a star player. Mm -hmm. he, you know, so I want to be clear on that. I'm not saying that, oh, he's not good enough to do. No. Connor McDavid can be an independent player and still help his team because he's it, uh, on another level. Mm. Most players are not. You mentioned uh, yelling and screaming coaches, uh, which takes us terrific segue to Paul Maurice and the Florida Panthers. Um, man, did he lose it on the bench <laughs> against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I, I was okay with it. I mean, we've seen I think Paul, that's his second best one of all time. Ooh, which is the other one? The meme that's out there constantly yelling at the refs? To you and to you. Yeah, and yeah. To you. I, think, I think it's one of the... And you too. <laughs> I think it's one of the single greatest videos I've ever seen of a yeah. coach. I had a quick exchange with him and I'm like, hmm, that was interesting. <laughs> he goes, I lost it. I flat out lost it, but man, did it feel good. Which is essentially what he said post game too, right? He's right. just like, yeah. Now, again, whether that factored into them clawing back and winning that game in overtime, I, let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt there. Prior to that game, I don't know if you caught it on first up in Toronto, Big Walt. Keith Kachuk, yes, an absolute dagger to the Florida Panthers, including his son Matthew. 
going into that game saying, you know, well, let's hope they're not skating around looking for Matthews and Mariner's autograph. You know, check these guys. <laughs> oh, I could, how many dads, Ray, how many dads would get away with something like that on, One. on publicly? One. One. Yeah. <laughs> like, first of all, who else would say that? Exactly. exactly. But that's just Walt. Like he's been... Like, <laughs> I, I remember, honestly, like when I got to St. Louis and, you know, I, I knew, I didn't know Keith, but like he was a, you know, everybody knows he's a big personality, right? Like he, yeah. And, and that's in a room with Chris Pronger and Al McGinnis. Like there were big personalities on that mm-hmm. team. So I don't, I get there and I don't know the interplay in the room, right? So yeah. I usually got lots to say, but I'm sitting there and I'm watching and <laughs> Walt, and the late Pavel Dimitra always played together. Yeah. And those two guys used to give it to each other <laughs> all the time. And they'd go, you know, right before the game, everybody's like, you know, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And Walt would go, hey, Pav, uh, you know, try to give me a pass not bouncing tonight. Would you just one of them? He'd say it to him all the time. <laughs> and Pavel would give it back. I'm like, look at these. Like, because yeah. it wasn't said like, ha, ha, ha. No. But those two guys, it was part of their thing. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, this is unbelievable. Loved, loved every second of it because it's so legit and so genuine yep. coming from Keith Kachuk. But what about Florida now, right? Yep. Crucial wins. They kind of stub their toe going into Toronto. They find a way to get that extra point and follow it up back to back with a win against Montreal. So they're doing what they need to do this time of the year. They are. I, I, I keep thinking they're finished. And then they win two games and you're like, Oh, they're not finished. Mm. They're, they're right there again. Yeah. Um, you know, what would be awesome is if they're going to get in and Aaron Ekblad scores the winning goal at home because- and Brooks Kepka puts that <laughs> cone on his head upside down <laughs> and they jam it on top. Uh, Bubba Watson just grilled him by the way. Hey, Brooks oh, Kepka. did he? I didn't oh, see yeah. that. It's a great exchange with the media because Bob is a bit of a hockey fan too. So, right. You know, he was trying to understand the context of what the hell Kepka was doing, whether or not he'd been overserved, like all of these things. So it was tremendous. So there's Well, I don't know I don't know if you saw the Netflix documentary, but while Kepka's sitting there calling Ekblad a pylon and a loser and yeah. all that stuff, you know, maybe Brooks could have a a conversation and tell everybody how he's not going to win anymore again. And he can do the yeah. whoa me thing again. Yeah. So yeah. I'm over I, it I thought it, look, he's at a game. He can do whatever he wants, but just so long as he knows he looked like a donkey. Yeah. All right. Well, big fight in both conferences for playoff spots going into the weekend. So we'll revisit. Obviously it's a game by game watch when we're back with episode mm. 53 on Tuesday. Thought we'd wrap headlines with a quick thought on Marty Walsh, who we've known is the executive director of the Players Association for quite some time. Uh, decorated union leader, said all of the right things. Met the media in Toronto on Thursday for the first time. And among the things that jumped out to me was him saying, I'm prioritizing relationships with players. And I I know in doing my sourcing as that story was developing, Ray, that was a big, big thing for the search committee and for uh the the committee of players assembled by the players association was his want to travel and not just do a quick tour like be out there you know get near the the rooms and talk to the players not just the stars of the game but you know talk to the guys who are bouncing up and down from the american league and the national hockey league how big of a deal to you as a former player would that be and then he committed to the World Cup saying, look, Russia, let's push that aside for now. We'll deal with world events when we need to deal with them. But first, we have to establish we're doing this and let's get it hammered out. So I thought those were two pretty big takeaways. Uh, First one, um, uh, you know, about the travel. There's a real challenge to that uh, with the hockey schedule. And the challenge is plenty of times teams are not in one place very often. You know, like you, you get in night before a game. Nobody wants to meet the night before a game. They want to eat and go to bed and, you know, and just kind of relax. You have to do it on a homestand. Well, then on a homestand, which day is best? There's always other events going on that, you know, most people don't see that, you know, you 
you have a, a charity thing, you, you know, that burns one day after practice and, you know, it, it, it's a challenge. Logistically, that's a challenge, mm-hmm. but I think it's really important because if, for a lot of times when you're playing, you, you need instant satisfaction Okay. because like I go play a game. I don't need anybody else to tell me whether I did well or not. Right. I just know, and it's finished and I go on to the next one. So much of the, of the talking becomes, okay, let's try and let's look at this. We'll talk to the league about this. And you know, Drake's it's a long play. There's, it's not immediate. Every, no. So guys lose interest because nothing happens. Yeah. Even though it's a back channel thing and it's taken time and, you know, like everything takes, you know, uh, a chat, a discussion, a meeting. Oh, and now we're somewhere. Yeah. And that takes a lot of time. So I, I do applaud that. Um, the players really do need to be interested because when we played, there was less things to be interested in. Mm-hmm. The game, the business, it's all much more complicated. The escrow, the partnership with the league, that's all way more involved. And if you're and if you're only involved in it every four or five years, you know, like your attention, well, you're not you're not gonna know what's going on and you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna have a union that that comes in second place all the time. Yeah. That's the first thing. The World Cup, um, I don't think there's anybody involved or in and around the sport that doesn't think it's the best idea that, you know, we would love to have it. When do you have it? How do you, you put the the framework in place? The Russia part's really difficult Yeah, because there is no world cup without Russia in it. It's hard. For I mean, sure. I, I guess you could, yes, there is, there could be a world cup, but yeah. it just wouldn't be the same, but the framework, the logistics that, you know, that the timing of the tournament, all those things, can be chipped away at and then I guess he's probably right and then you can get to where world events are because certainly the NHL is not going to influence that all right big week and so much more coming developing with the final games of the NHL regular season we'll be on top of it those are your headlines